Welcome to Connect with County Leaders. Here's your host, Brian Hill. Hello and welcome to the Connect with County Leaders. I'm Brian Hill. On this edition, I am so pleased to have our Director of Animal Sheltering, Risa Curia. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to have you. So, you know, I kind of have like one couple, maybe 15 questions I'm going to ask you. Okay. Have you always been an animal lover? Well, interestingly, <laughs> yes. Um, my grandfather was a veterinarian. Oh. And so my earliest memory um, was being in his veterinary clinic and spending time with animals uh, that were recovering from surgery. Mm. And it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, of course, I grew up with all of the animals that were dropped off at his clinic that uh, he didn't have the heart to euthanize. So I had a little chihuahua that would bite and a, a three-legged, three one-eyed cat. <laughs> Everybody was just special in their own way. Um, but it definitely imprinted on me just um, how important animals are and also our duty of compassion and care to the animals that uh, we come in contact with. Well, that's, you know, that's, I didn't know that your grandfather was a vet, so yeah. that's interesting. So, you know, at this juncture, I'm going to ask, what's the fav most favorite thing about your job? And then I'm going to ask, what's the hardest thing about oh. your job? And you better not say working with me. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying that right now. <laughs> Well, um, Fairfax County Animal Shelter is the county's only open access shelter. That means that we take everybody. So creatures great and small. Right now we have a hedgehog in our care. We've had an emu. We've had um, far animals, farm animals. Um, we have reptiles. And we have all sorts of animals. So we take everybody regardless of um, their species or their behavior or their background. And that's something that we're really proud of and an important service we provide for the county. Um, so generally we take in between four and 5,000 animals a year. And so you can imagine with all of those different animals, there's a broad spectrum from heartache to joy that we see every day. Um, I think though, my favorite thing about my job uh, and, and for most of our staff is just seeing adoptions and it's really hard to have a bad day if you go into our adoption floor and especially seeing children for the first time adopt a pet is amazing and the joy and the excitement that they have to take a pet home and um, they're so excited to learn and be involved in the care of that pet. So uh, that is wonderful. I think something I, I really enjoy as well is um, you know, we have animals that come to us that may have not had the best start of life yeah. and um, so may have been lacking socialization or lacking veterinary care. And to see them come down and they're shut down or maybe struggling and um, with a medical issue and then see them blossom into uh, an animal that is affectionate and loving. Uh, we just had a recent hoarding situation, and so we got a bunch of cats from that situation, and they were they were very fractious, um, a lot of hissing, and they did not want to be around people. Um, but due to the patience of our staff and also our volunteers, they worked with each of those cats individually, and um, slowly, one after another came around, and those cats were going to be available for adoption as pets. So. Um, that is a very rewarding part of the job. Um, I think for one of the hardest parts of the job um, is is seeing animals that that are um, that are struggling, and also I think it's a challenge when we have families come in and they're having to make hard choices, and which is seems to be happening a lot more lately, where families are struggling um, with some of the economic impacts of pet ownership from veterinary care um, to affording pet food and supply. All those costs are going up. Um, finding housing that is accessible for their pet. And so um, witnessing those families go through um, that heartache of having to surrender a pet to our care is, um, is very challenging, I think, for all of us. So it sounds like the post-pandemic and the pandemic situations have put a large strain on all animal sheltering agencies local throughout the country. Mm -hmm. But you said that we have to take in, we take in about 4,000 animals 
What is our adoption rate looking like? As you take in the animals, obviously we're trying to get them mm -hmm. in a place where they can be brought home to another family. What's our adoption rate looking like? And props, yeah. to, the, props to the volunteers. I, I mean, every yes. time I go there, you got a plethora of volunteers. So props to the volunteers. Yes, yes. no, major props to the volunteers. <laughs> they are fantastic. Yeah. And we, we just couldn't do the work that we do without our volunteers and the community. We mm -hmm. have so much support. Um, from Fairfax County residents. It's a community that really values animals and the work that we do. Um, so we're very fortunate and we can all be very proud that Fairfax County Animal Shelter, um, when an animal comes into our care, we're gonna pursue the best outcome for him. And the majority of animals that come to our care are placed in loving adoption, adoptive homes, or um, we're also, if an animal comes in as a stray, we do everything we can to reunite the pet with their family. And so, um, that we have a very good return rate um, to owners. We always do remind owners, please, um, please wear a collar and identification. Um, and also uh, microchips are wonderful. Um, but we have seen in this last year, a 20% increase in animals coming into the shelter. And um, that's over the previous year. And so that's been quite remarkable and also very concerning. Um, we were very fortunate because this was happening right at the same time we were bringing on um, a new shelter. And so we were able to accommodate um, the sudden need of, of so much kennel space. But what we're seeing um, with this new population of animals coming into our care is that a lot of them have challenges behaviorally. A lot of them have medical issues that they're dealing with. So that has been something that we've had to allocate additional resources. And again, that's tied into COVID-19 yeah. and the pandemic. And um, we're seeing you know, the pandemic and the impacts manifesting in so many different ways, right? And, and our children and their health and well-being, but then also in animals and delayed socialization and veterinary care. So when you're saying there are issues with the dogs or the cats, he or she coming into our shelter, mm -hmm. you're seeing challenges with those pets. What and why, how would a pet have a challenge coming in? I mean, mm -hmm. theoretically, you look at an animal, you feed the animal, you play with the animal, mm -hmm. we should be good, but you're saying we're having challenges. What kind of other challenges are there? Well, for dogs, um, that time when they're a puppy from right. zero to one year, just like with human children, it's really critical for okay. socialization. Okay. And so what we have seen is that a lot of dogs that were not, were entering the pandemic during a really critical developmental period, but that were also acquired during the pandemic, as we saw all the news articles about an increase of pet acquisition um, mm -hmm. at the early days of the pandemic. Um, those animals didn't get maybe the support and socialization that they should have. So now we're on the back end uh, engaging with animals and trying to provide a lot of the support and structure that they need um, so that they can be, go play at dog parks and um, they can be trusting around strangers and different humans. So, Well, that must help with those volunteers. Again, Our volunteers are right in there. I'm going to give more are... props to the volunteers. <laughs> I'm going after the volunteers today. Well, and just to give a shout out to our volunteers, they increased um, the hours they contributed That's this right. last year over the previous year by 45%. So um, our volunteers, their hours is the equivalent of 10 full-time positions. So, I mean, to say that we couldn't do the work without them, we really couldn't. They do everything from socializing cats and dogs to helping us out the front desk. Yeah, I feel a budget ass coming soon, but it's okay. <laughs> so I, 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 I know how you operate. That's great. Yeah. Um, you've had some heartwarming adoption stories make the national news lately. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about those. Sure, <laughs> sure. Well, um, one of my staff is a, a very uh, loyal uh, Grubhub purchaser. She's uh, a millennial. <laughs> so she, she orders her lunch almost daily um, from Grubhub and Uber Eats and all those apps. And we've actually had a few drivers come in nice. to <laughs> deliver food and end up walking out with an animal. Um, and that just speaks to our open adoption process, right? We, we, no matter what brings you into the shelter, we're gonna to talk to you, we're gonna find you an animal that fits your life. So you gotta be careful there. Um, but so we had Jihu who had been in our care. Um, he's a large dog and he's just a great um, 
dog with a lot of energy, and Jihu had been in our care for almost a year. Wow. And I mean, he was there from no fault of his own, just a big, a big boy. And um, we had a, a food delivery driver come in to, to deliver uh, Nicole's lunch, and <laughs> uh, and he spotted eyes with Jihu, and G he, you know, he connected <coughs> with him. And he asked our staff if we if he could meet Jihu, which we said, of course. And then he came back, he introduced his little girl. He's a single dad. And um, they all just instantly connected. Awesome. And so they have just been a wonderful story. And we're still staying in touch with Jihu and his new family. That That is absolutely fantastic, because I remember reading that. And I, I remember you sending me an, e an email on that. And then that was followed up with um, two chiefs adopt yeah. doing pet adoptions and I yeah. before I asked this question I said be, you're gonna have to answer this as well mm -hmm. of the two chiefs which one did better and which one do you like oh the best? my okay we're not going there I'm not falling in that trap I Darn. like them equal Darn. okay <laughs> give me an uh, overview of the two chiefs and what they did and how yeah. they've adopted uh, helped us adopt dogs mm -hmm. and cats and all the animals in the shelter what, what was that about well, animal adoptions takes the village. And right now what we're seeing is, again, post-pandemic ad adoptions have really slowed. And this isn't just in Fairfax County, this is nationwide. Um, so we are trying to be really creative about bringing people into the shelter and uh, just reminding people that we are here as a, as a source of adoption. And um, so we got together and thought, how can we uh, capitalize on some of the Super Bowl fun? And I know both of the Chiefs are big sports fans. Um, but and they're not athletes. I just want to make sure you know that. Right? <laughs> well, that, you saying, said that. I didn't it. say I that. Can, I can back it up, too. I'm saying it right okay, now. Okay, okay. <laughs> well... But they, they enjoy the sports, and so they were um, really happy to, to get on board. And so we divided up our big dogs into two teams, and we said whoever, went, whoever gets the most adoption wins. And as luck would have it, they both got the same number of adoptions, 10 and 10. I don't know how it happened that way, but it did. So we had 20 dogs adopted in I'm, just a short week. I'm pretty weekend. confident Kevin paid somebody, sorry, <laughs> Chief Davis paid somebody <laughs> off to make it level. You think so? I okay. think so, okay. I think so. But that's a great story. Yeah. And I think we need to think about outside the box and doing more adoptions. Uh, I'm gonna challenge you to figure out what the county executive versus the county administrator of Loudoun Ooh the city manager oh. of Alexandria, the county manager of Arlington, and we can even throw in uh, Mr. Shorter down there in Prince William County. So let's do something. Let's do it. All right, that's I'm, a great I'm, waiting, idea. I'm waiting for great you to come up with idea. that idea. So I could- We all have a lot of dogs, right. so I think it would be a fun regional event, yeah. <laughs> you know, the county's working on a plan to consolidate some of our animal services under the shelter. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about what's been proposed and how we're going forward with that? Sure. So. Animal services has changed dramatically in the past 10 years, and we've really expanded and, um, and also focused more on how we provide services to diverse communities, people and pets alike. Okay. And so our neighboring jurisdictions and also most major metropolitan areas nationwide have um, all of their animal services unified under one department or one agency. And so um, this really helps expand service delivery to the community and also the understanding that animal care and control functions are part of the same program, right? We're all serving one community and we're serving one, one resident population and one animal population. So um, in Fairfax County, we have our services bifurcated. Right. So in 2016, a decision was made to put the animal control services in the police department, and then the animal sheltering services, we are a separate independent department. And what that has resulted in is um, a more siloed approach to animal services. And, and also some, some unfortunate challenges with animals and people falling in between the cracks because we have two separate missions. So um, the police department leadership and the shelter leadership came together and we looked at how we provide those services and if there is an opportunity to improve. And so um, we looked at our programs, but then we also looked at regionally um, that our neighbors have this consolidated model. And then we looked at nationwide 
um, other jurisdictions. Then we also consulted industry experts and leaders and came to the conclusion that our community would best be served by having all things animal under one roof, a one-stop shop really for animals for our community. And so um, we put forth that proposal to the Board of Supervisors for consideration. Well, you know, when you, you say that so eloquently and passionately, and I'm 100% um, behind you when, you when what you stated, the countywide strategic plan we use to guide our decision making. Mm -hmm. We use to guide our co-location services. Right. We use to guide decision making for leadership with the Board of Supervisors. When you look at the Lorton Center shelter, mm -hmm. that is a co-located service. Right guided by the strategic plan in one Fairfax. Mm -hmm. Now that you have two locations, mm -hmm. how are you going to manage two locations? Because they're not next door to each other. There's some, ge some geography that we have to take care of. We need it in South County in the Lorton area. We have Mike Fry up here, but how are you in your mind saying, all right, now I have two. What's the best way to manage the two? Well, I spent a lot of time on Fairfax County Parkway uh, going it's between good, the two it's locations. It's a good road. It's a, good road. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great road. Um, so we have a great team at both shelters, and so that makes managing the two facilities easy. Um, we also are constantly moving animals between the two locations, and, and they're both distinct in their own ways. Um, we provide the same services at both, so we have adoption, we have um, pet resource services, so we have pet food pantry at both, um, we have behavior and training support at both, and then we also have uh, vaccine, vaccine clinics that we offer at both. Okay. And um, so we, we launched a very ambitious um, program to focused on wellness services. And so um, having those at both services really helps distribute um, the work that we and the, the resources that we provide to both sides of the county. And we've been finding that um, Many of the individuals that we've been serving through Lorton, it's their first time engaging really? with us in any capacity. In fact, our most recent um, vaccine clinic at Lorton, um, most of the folks had never had any kind of um, service from Fairfax County Animal Shelter. So it's a wonderful way. Lorton has just been a fantastic um, footprint to serve that side of the county. And um, the staff have been doing a fantastic job uh, supporting the services and needs at both locations. So how long have you been open in Lorton? So we opened officially to the public the end of October. We had our grand opening. Um, and then we started doing adoptions and also surrender appointments shortly thereafter. So since October of 2023, we've yeah. opened in Lorton. And how many new, or you know, percentage-wise, mm -hmm new folks coming to your new facility that has not been a part of Mike Fry's facility, mm -hmm. Animal Shelter up North County. Do you see a lot of new people coming now? I mean, you mentioned it, but yeah. do we see a volume? Well, we, ha we have. I mean, the first day, just the first, our I opening like ceremony, <laughs> we had a thousand people come through our front door. <clears throat> so if that is any indicator of just the excitement of the community yeah, to have yeah. this Lorton campus open. And we've actually had so many residents come in and offer to volunteer that That's we're cool. in a backlog. We're, we're, I think we're three to four months that we're asking folks to wait while we onboard and train. I mean, we've just had that level of excitement from the community. And um, we have so many scouts coming in and wanting to do scout projects and to support the animals. And um, we just recently launched our Reading Tales program at Lorton. So that's where children get to come in and read a bedtime story to one of our shelter pets. That's awesome. Um, but we're also um, continually expanding more programs at the Lorton shelter. So I mentioned we have our pet food pant pantry mm. and we've been expanding the, the footprint of our pet, pet food pantry because we know not everybody can get to the Lorton campus. So we're also working with like Lorton um, Community Action Center and other organizations that are providing food to the community. And so we're having little pop-up shelters with <laughs> some of these organizations so we can even spread our work even further into That's the awesome. community, so beyond the shelter walls. You know, I look at Lorton and I say strategic, I say tactical, I say co-located services, and I say the folks in the Lorton, Mount Vernon, Franconia area, 
well-deserved. Springfield, well-deserved. So we've talked a lot about the operations. Mm -hmm. Give me a favorite animal. Oh, my. Oh, come on. It's I like choosing a favorite child. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Yeah. I got three. I could do that. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite animal? Well, you know, I, as we were, as you know, I have, I have uh, gold, not goldfish, but tropical fish in okay. my house. Um, when, when my kids were growing up, we had two dogs most of the time. Okay. And um, unfortunately, the dog Petey, who my oldest son BJ picked out when he was, I think he was eight. BJ is now 28. Petey just passed away, I think, last year. I don't know how he lasted that long. Uh, and then there's a chihuahua at that. Uh, my ex-wife has a chihuahua down there. I mean, you know, uh, I, I didn't really care for the chihuahua. So, but I, I, I put it out there. What, what kind of dogs did you like? Or what kind of animals? I say, because I shouldn't say just dogs. You know, I, I just, the more I um, engage with different breeds, the mm. more I find in different species that I, I'm intrigued by all of them, to be honest. I think <laughs> reptiles are really neat. I think we have some rats that are super cool. Um, they are very social. They love to be brushed. They, we found one of our rats. One of our staff is fostering him, and he especially <laughs> loves curry. I mean, you, animals are very they're they're very unique in their own ways. And um, you said rats. Yes, we have rats that we okay. adopt out, and we we have a hedgehog in residence right now. Um, we have a bearded dragon. So I I think part of the many benefits of 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 the work that I do is that I get to know these animals on an individual basis. So when I was in Beaufort County, South Carolina, we had an emu, <laughs> a peacock, and a donkey. <laughs> I mean, I was just like, wow, are, yeah. are you serious? And I remember the shelter director's last name was Linton. She always used to say, come, come check out what I got today. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's so amazing. No, yeah. no snakes, right? Well, we don't have a snake in residence right now, okay. but we do get them pretty okay. regularly. Yeah, and I mean, that's fun because we, we get to figure out, <laughs> part of the challenge is like, oh, this is the first time, and we have to figure out how to create a habitat yeah. and provide supportive care. Um, and we also have a wonderful veterinarian um, and Pender Veterinarian, we have a contract with them, and they have a, a fantastic exotics team. And so we always call them and like, you know, what is what does this animal need to eat? And so they're always on, on standby when we get those unusual animals. So as we close our, our show today, mm -hmm. Risa Courier, tell me what you want the residents of Fairfax County to know about, mm -hmm. about Fairfax County sheltering. Mm -hmm. Well, we want the residents of Fairfax County to know that we're here for them. And we don't want to be the last resort. We don't want to be the last call they make when they're facing a challenge. Um, we have really expanded the services and the programs that we provide to support pet retention in the homes. So if you're having a behavior and training issue, if you're having a medical issue, if you're struggling with um, accessing food for your pet, we are here to support keeping pets and their families together. So give us a call. We have wonderful staff that would love to talk to you <laughs> and learn more about whatever you need. Well, that wraps us up for today. My thanks to Fairfax County Department of Animal Sheltering Director Risa Courier for joining us and sharing some of those great stories. And I'm telling you right now, I will outdo Chief Davis and Chief Butler. I look forward to talking to you again soon, and I look forward to having another connection with county leaders. Thank you again, I'm Brian Hill, and I'll see you next month.